Hello, beautiful people. Hope everybody's had a great week. Uh, I want to say thank you guys very much for listening, watching, paying attention, all the feedback. Uh, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Uh, so let's get down to business. Uh, the past couple of weeks, I've uh, been talking a lot, a lot about politics and the economy and things like that. It's kind of a kind of a drag, kind of a downer. So I'm going to change, uh, shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about finance and uh, finance and business. Um, hopefully good stuff, good news. Um, see, I just try to watch trends, just being self-employed. I try to watch trends. I try to pay attention to what's going on in the economy. Um, I do get people that approach me and ask me for advice about certain things. Um, so one thing I'll say is a lot of, a lot of folks, and this is something that I am, I find myself in and I have been in the past. Um, I'm usually looking for answers, um, when very often I already have the answer. I already sort of know intuitively what to do. I already have the knowledge and the wisdom to, to take action. And I'm afraid to take action, um, for, for fear, uh, different types of reasons. Fear is one of them. Um, loss of time, loss of money, loss of resources, um, embarrassment. There's lots of reasons to not take action. But a lot of times I, I used to find myself in all these situations where I was always like looking for the answer out there somewhere. I was always looking for help. And that's what I thought I always need. I always need help. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody figure this out for me. Somebody tell me the answer. Somebody give me the, somebody give me the secret sauce or whatever the case is. And it took me a long time to realize that I'm the secret sauce, like the decisions and, and all these things, all the education, the learning process, the answers, they all come from me. Now, there's different ways I had to go find those answers and figure things out. But it took me a long time to understand that no one person has the answer to all of my problems. And I think for a long time, I was always searching for these um, particularly in books or coaching programs or mastermind programs. I was always looking to like latch onto somebody that was smarter than me or better than me or had m more money or whatever the case is. I was always uh, looking to grasp onto somebody, hopefully hoping that some of their, their wisdom would like trickle down or some of their um, success would like rub off on me. And it really just took me a long time to, to realize that Anything that I ever wanted to do or, or had ever planned to do or whatever the case is, was going to come from action, going to come from me doing certain things. Yeah, Yes, of course, there's an educational process you have to go through by reading or learning books, articles, the Internet. There's lots of, of ways to learn and to get the information that you need. But at the end of the day, action is the best teacher, especially when it comes to like finances or business or things like that. Um, everybody, and this is something I say a lot, everybody pays for their education. Some people pay to go to Harvard. Some people pay to go to trade school. Um, and some people go to the school of hard knocks. Some people just learn by doing, and I paid for my education by making mistakes. A lot of times people think when it comes to owning a business or being in business or investing or anything, uh, finance re related that it's all that, that if they, learn enough before they get started that they're never going to lose a dime. They're never going to lose a nickel. It's going to be all upside. It's all going to be very consistent returns on their money, or um, it's going to be easy or simple if they just have the knowledge. If I just have the knowledge, then it's just going to be easy. And I'm always going to make money. There's just no such thing like that. That world doesn't exist. And the example that I usually tell people is, or example I usually use is if let's just say, for instance, me and uh, Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk, if we were really close friends, I could not get with them and have a sit down one on one and ask them, hey, you know, what what steps do I take to be successful? How do I create Tesla? How do I create SpaceX? How do I create Facebook? How do I create Amazon? Even if those people that are hyper successful, even if they gave me the exact blueprint of what they did to get where they are, that blueprint is practically useless to me and everybody else. Like there is not another SpaceX and there's probably not going to be one like that ever. There's not another Tesla. There's not another Amazon. There's not another Facebook. There's other social media platforms, but they're not Facebook. You know what I mean? Like I could not be given the blueprint to any of those businesses and recreate it. That's just not how it works. There's a process that you go through that you learn. And that process starts with 
taking steps and and going without knowing. Like a lot of times we think that we have to have the destination um, in view to get started. And unfortunately, that's not how it works with business or finance or anything like that. Even when it comes to like investing, like I have different types of investments and most of them I knew absolutely nothing about before I got started. And yeah, I've I've lost money in, in investments. Like I've, I've lost money starting businesses. I've lost money in business. Um, I tell people a story about how there's you know, it's when you're self-employed, sometimes there's weeks or months or even longer where you don't get paid so other people can get paid. Like you're you're putting in sweat equity, you're building this business, not getting paid, and you're spending all of your time not making any money. And that's the cost of your education. It's what you're learning in that process. And same thing with investment. Like when you make a bad investment, it's not you, you can't equate the amount of money that you lose to to money. You have to equate it to the cost of education. Now, it's only a loss of money if you quit. If you stop, that's when you lose. That's that's when that's no longer a cost of education. If you if you invest in something, let's say you invest five thousand dollars into something, and you lose three thousand dollars, and then you take your two thousand dollars out and say to hell with that, I'm going to go to the mall and spend this two thousand dollars on clothes. Well, then, yeah, you've lost. You didn't learn anything. So that is definitely a loss. But if you take that $3,000 loss and invest more wisely or invest in a different avenue and you learn something from that, then that $3,000 was not a loss. That was the cost of your education. You're now wiser. You're now smarter. You now know better. And that comes in the form of, like I said, you just have to start doing. Um, I didn't, even now, if I could go back and erase all the investments that I've ever made or all the business decisions I've ever made, if I could go back and erase those and start today with all that, with all that knowledge, I would invest differently. My businesses would look a lot different, but I don't, I don't have the benefit of hindsight. You can't just go back and undo all of that because that was the, the price you pay and the price I paid to learn what I've learned to get to this point. So even if I make a mistake, even if I, if I, you know, make a horrible decision and it cost us resources, time, money, whatever the case is, I have to, and I'm really hard on myself, but I have to look at that like, and I have to reinforce to myself that this is a cost of education. You know, nobody was going to be able to tell me that thing was going to happen. Nobody could have predicted that. There's, there's rare randomness to all of these things. Even if you go invest in real estate, if you go invest in the stock market, there's lots of wise ways to do all of those but things happen randomly in the stock market that you cannot control and people cannot predict. There's things that happen in the housing market that you cannot control and you cannot predict. So thinking that you have to have the answer before you get started is, is they, they call it paralysis by analysis. And I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I will anal uh, analyze something to death and not make a decision. And the next thing I know, that decision that I should have made four years ago that would have yielded you know, a better business or a more profitable business or more, um, more locations in my business or a better investment or whatever the case is, because I analyzed it for four years, that opportunity is now gone or that opportunity has now changed or that opportunity is now more expensive and it's got a lower return at this point. So and now uh, analyzing something to death is not the answer. You're going to learn more by doing. Now, I certainly wouldn't, if I had $8, I wouldn't invest my last $8 in Bitcoin, for example. Like that's probably not a good investment. If I had $8, the best investment, the, the best investment if you've got $8 is to buy a book, like start reading on stuff that you're interested in. Buy, buy, the, buy a finance book, buy an investment book. You can learn a lot more on $8 than you can actually make any kind of money on $8. So there's different ways to do it and there's lots of ways to look at it. But the main thing is, is that you're going to get more out of action than you are in action. Um, you have to do it. You, there's just no way nobody, I, I can't tell you, nobody can tell you. Now there's, there's pitfalls that we all want to avoid. Um, obviously, like if you had, you know, a thousand dollars and you're going to invest, I, I would obviously tell you, don't go to a casino, don't buy lottery tickets. Like there's terrible ways to invest your money. But if you decide today that, hey, I'm going to take $1,000 and um, I'm going to invest it in the stock market, and then three months later, an opportunity comes up that you think you can invest in to make more money or make a better return on your money, well, you may have put your $1,000 in the stock market and it may be getting you a 3%, 5%, 8% return. And in three months, that's not going to look like a lot. 
But if another opportunity in, presents itself that you think has a better return on investment or it's a, it's a safer investment, now you now you're forced to make this decision or or you are forced into a situation where now you're like okay well i took my thousand dollars and i invested in the stock market and now there's another opportunity that requires a thousand dollars now you're going to put yourself to the test because now you're going to learn a new skill and that that new skill is how do i come up with another how do i come up with another thousand dollars because you don't want to stop this investment from getting this return you're now interested your momentum is now going in the direction of of investing and you will find a way to get this other thousand dollars to start this other investment and now you'll have two thousand dollar investments in different in different channels so it's not about finding the perfect the perfect um the perfect investment or you know the highest possible return i mean obviously if if there was a safe you know investment that was 15 percent returns year over year over year Everybody would invest in that. Like that, that investment doesn't exist because if it if it did exist, everybody would buy it. Um, so don't necessarily think that that whenever you're thinking about investing, that the, the best thing to do is is to analyze, analyze, analyze. A lot of it's going to come from doing. You're going to have to buy an investment. You're going to have to see how it works out. You're going to have to watch it, and it's a slow process. Um, not a lot of people have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to just invest. So you have to start small and it's going to take time. And then while you're learning this market or learning this investment in your meantime, in, in, in the meantime and in your spare time, you could be reading and try to understand this market better, try to read and understand other markets. Um, and, and again, the, the number one investment you could possibly ever make is in yourself to increase your income. Like that is the one thing that you can do all day, every day. Um, because that, that's going to yield the most results over time. Um, not a lot of investments. Like if, if you have a job and you're making 50 grand a year, um, you can educate yourself and train yourself and find training in certain areas to double your income in 12 months or 24 months. Not a lot of investments out there can double your money in a year or two years, but you can double your income in a year or two years. Um, so you can think to yourself, okay, well, what would my life look like if I went from making 50 grand to a hundred grand? Obviously that's life changing amount of money. So, um, and then also if you continue, if you are able to be disciplined and able to stay on a um, $50,000 a year lifestyle, and use that extra income, you know, after tax, you're probably looking at 30, 35,000, whatever your tax bracket is. If you're able to stay living a $50,000 a year lifestyle and invest that other 30 or 35,000, I mean, you can imagine like how um, exponentially this will grow if you're able to live on less and make more. So that's probably the best investment you could possibly ever make is investing in yourself. And then the rest of it, you're just gonna have to learn as you go. Like I said, I've got investments out there. I've, I've lost money on businesses. I've lost money on investments. Um, I have investments that are in the dumpster right now. And I have to, I have to make a decision. Like, am I going to bail out of them now because I've lost 50% of my money or 80% of my money, or am I going to ride it out? Am I going to, going to try to weather this storm? Now that I've got, you know, 20% of my money left, if, if 80% of it's gone and 20% of it's still in there, am I going to, am I going to bail out, take out that 20% and find something else? Or am I going to try to weather this storm and ride this thing out and, and hope and that this market returns or that this investment returns and, and goes back on the upside. So that's just part of it, but there's, there's no, there's no playbook. There's no perfect answer. It's, it's all done by doing and practicing and learning and listening and paying attention and figuring out as you go. Because like I said, there is no, there is no answer. Even if somebody that had all the money in the world, if you were sitting next to um, Warren Buffett and he said, Hey, these are the, these are the things that you're going to have to do. And you did them step by step. He, you're going to lose money somewhere along the way. You're going to have to learn along the way. And, you know, Warren Buffett's got one of the easiest, you know, investment strategies, you know, in the world, you know, find, find companies that are undervalued, buy stock in them. And then, the, and then over time, those companies will, will return more on their money because they're undervalued based on the, on the uh, profitability of the company. It's a very simple concept, very sim simple principle. Dude's made tons and tons of money. He tells everybody exactly how to do it. Yet very few people are actually doing it, you know, so having a playbook is one thing, but actually doing it's another. Um, and in most investments, there is no playbook. There is no blueprint. You just had to get out there and do it, live it, learn it, uh, practice it. And it just becomes part of your daily routine and you get better as time goes on. Um, and then another thing I'll say is, um, 
be very careful about who you do take advice from. Like I said, there are several times over years that, like I said, I was always looking for the answer out there. I was looking for help. I was, you know, signing up for these programs. I was signing up for these masterminds. I was signing up for these programs, um, these, you know, coaching programs. And a lot of times these companies or these businesses are selling a product. They're selling you the idea of if you buy their product, they're going to, they're going to help you. And really they're just selling a product. They're, they're convincing you that they have the answer where they just constantly keep dragging it out further and further and further. And they never really give you the answer. So it's just kind of this money making scheme where they're just like, Hey, we're going to teach you, we're going to show you. And then when you start trying to learn the actual principles of it, and then you want to understand, um, understand how it works. They don't really give you any like meat. It's always just like fluff. So be careful who you listen to, who you pay attention to. And a lot of times, and this is probably not the best way to say it, but a lot of times the people that are giving you advice are like dream killers. They're, they're people that you know that you are looking to for guidance and it may not be intentional. They may just be offering you advice. You may just be telling them about your dreams and you may just be having a conversation over Thanksgiving dinner or you're having a conversation on Christmas holiday or on vacation or whatever the case is. And then you have an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or whoever in your family um, or a friend that they may have the best of intentions. They may be looking out for you. They may, they may actually genuinely care about your outcome, but they may not know what the hell they're talking about either. Like, you know, if, if they, if this person that's giving you this advice telling you, Hey, yeah, don't start that business. Hey, yeah, don't invest in this. Hey, don't, don't invest in the stock market. Don't buy real estate. Oh yeah. I bought a, I, I tried to rent house one time. It was the worst thing I ever did. Or, Oh yeah, I invest in the stock market and then it crashed in 2008. I mean, there's all these horror stories that go along with these situations and you you listen to people that have been there before or you think that have been there before and they may have the best of intentions when they're giving you advice but you have to be very careful you have to run this advice through the filter of of is this person where i want to be or is this person where i see myself so for instance if that aunt or, aunt or uncle or cousin or whoever it is that's in your family is offering you advice and they're not where you want to be you need to run run their information and their advice through a filter of this person's not even where I want to be. So how can I say for sure that this person has the answer? Yeah, they might have all the doomsday information like, oh yeah, this is terrible. This is awful. This is horrible. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. They may be able to tell you all of that, but where's the person that's going to tell you that it is a good idea? Because it may, even though it didn't work out for somebody close to you, and again, they may have the best of intentions, but if they're giving you this advice and they're telling you, hey, don't do this, you need to run it through the filter of is this person where I want to be because you don't have to be rude. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be disrespectful. But if this person is sharing their their circumstantial evidence with you that this this um, this course or this path or this investment isn't going to work for X, Y, Z reason, you have to question whether or not they actually have the correct answer and you may need to seek somebody out that does have the right answer, that that is successful in this area. Because if you only listen to people that didn't make it, then you're probably never gonna make it. You, you, you know, How can you constantly hear people tell you, no, you can't do that, no, this is a bad idea, no, you shouldn't do that, no. Just you know, take all your money out of the bank and stick it under your mattress. Like, If those people are giving you financial advice, you have to ask yourself, is that where I want to be? Do I want to take all my money out of the bank and stick it under my mattress? No, I don't. Then smile, nod, Thank, thank the person for their advice, aunt, uncle, cousin, whoever, friend, whatever it is, family member, thank them for their, for, thank them for caring, thank them for their advice, but just know that if they're not where you want to be or where you see yourself, um, then you can't let their, um, you can't let their story prevent you from trying. And a lot of times, you know, like I said, it's kind of dream killers. And I don't want to call your friends and family dream killers because I, I do believe that they actually want what's best for you. Um, but don't let them kill your dream because they're not where you want to be. Um, and another sort of uh, angle on that, see where I'm at on time. Um, another sort of angle on that is when I say be careful where you get your advice from, I get a lot of people, I say a lot of people, it's not a lot, that's an exaggeration. I get some people from time to time that I want to believe that they have the best of intentions when they approach me and try to give me this advice. Um, but I'm also really cautious and careful because I question whether or not when they give me this advice, if they have my best interest in mind. 
and again, we are human beings. We are selfish creatures. We, t we, we are in a, most of the time in a survival mindset where we're trying to do the best we can with what we have to get the best possible result for ourselves. And again, we, we, we hope, you know, if, if you are a good hearted person, you hope that that overflows to the people around you. But at the end of the day, um, you came into this world alone and you're going to leave this world alone. So you're a lot of what you're doing is for yourself. Um, but I'll give you this example. So recently I, um, so most of you know, I, I have a couple small businesses. One of them's in the furniture industry and, um, right next door to me is a restaurant and I'm out, I'm outside. Um, it's a nice day. I'm having a cigar. I'm having a coffee, relaxing, unwinding. And, um, one of the guys that runs a restaurant next door, uh, sees me outside. He comes by and he sits down next to me and he starts just sort of, you know, unsolicited, just starts dumping all this, you know, business advice on me and, um, you know, what I should do and why don't I do this or why don't I do that? And, you know, at first I'm just, you know, kind of playing along and listening and making conversation, but, you know, and I, I often, um, respond with frustration, but, you know, a few minutes into this conversation, I start to get frustrated with the way this guy's talking to me and the way he's, the way he's, um, I guess, proposing these business ideas and these business plans for, for a business that he's not even, tied to like this is my business and not his and i'm curious like he's offering me all this advice and i'm trying to again i'm trying to take it in as this guy's you know coming from a good place he's got a good heart you know and and he's just being nice he's just making conversation so and i'm trying not to be rude or mean or hateful and i'm trying not to you know honestly tell him what i really think about his business i'm like why are you over here sort of in a sly way, critiquing what you think I'm doing wrong. Why are you not more concerned with what you're doing? Why are you not more concerned with your business? You know, why? Cause I, I'm not blind. I pay attention to what's going on around me. I see his business is dwindling. I see the sales are down. I see the traffic's down. I, I hear what people say about the business online. I hear what people say when they come out of his restaurant and come into my business. Like I hear what people say, like, I don't under, I, I'm confused at this point while this guy's out here talking to me, why he's more concerned about my business than he is about his. And so as he's, you know, giving me all this advice, this free advice, and that's another thing to be very careful of, is be very careful of free advice. It's worth what you paid for it. So I start, when he asked me a question, I kind of turn it back around on him and I ask him sort of a similar question about his business. You know, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And you know what? You you would be shocked to find out that he's got really good reasons and excuses as to why these things aren't transpiring in his business. And I'm 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 as shocked as you are. I'm like, how is it possible that all this great advice that you're giving me about my business, you're not executing next door? Like our buildings are literally attached. There's a wall that divides us. Similar similar economy. Similar. Um, demographics, similar, similar, everything. We're literally right next door to each other. Yet for some reason you have all the answers to my problems that I deal with at my business, but you don't have the answers to solve your problems at your business. It's just a very confusing dynamic. And I'm, I'm blown away that he, d he doesn't see how strange this conversation is like, so I'm, again, I'm just sort of asking him questions about his business and Again, it's he, in a sense, had an excuse for every everything that he presented to me about what he felt, how he felt I should be operating my my business. He had an excuse as to why he wasn't doing it in his. And I'm just confused by this. I'm like, man, you sound like a kind of guy that's got all the answers. So why are these solutions so so good for my business, but you fail to execute them in your business? And and it made me think of something I heard a while back. And it in uh, this, the expression or the saying was some people have a problem for every solution. So every time I offered this same solution that he's offering me about my business, I would offer him the same solution about his business. And he and immediately, I mean, just he has an excuse. He, he, he's got a problem for every single solution I presented to him. So the conversation sort of dwindled and kind of kind of fell apart at that point. But it was just interesting to me that somebody again, maybe he's got good intentions. And, and, and another thing that happened in the conversation was um, he made one suggestion, a really expensive suggestion. 
which, hey, it's not even a bad idea. And, and I've thought of it myself and it's a great idea. But most small business owners know that everything costs money. Everything costs money. And most small business owners know that money doesn't grow on trees. So certain steps come in phases for your business. There's ups, there's downs, there's things that happen in your business, there's things you can't predict. You take them as you come, you make the best decisions that you can make at the time, and you deal with the circumstances. And certain things are really expensive. And one of his suggestions was a very expensive one, which of course, it's a dream for every small business. Yeah, sure, I would love to do this thing. So I asked him, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, yeah, man, that's a, that's a great idea. Like, you should give me some money and I'll do that. And he's like, oh, we'll be partners. And I'm like, oh, okay, there it is, there it is. So now you just kind of cut to the chase. And, and for you, it's as simple as, hey, I see you've got this sort of thing figured out over here. So I'll just piggyback on you with my grand idea that I just came up with on my own and we'll be, we'll be partners. So I'm like, so he kind of he kind of got to it right there. And I was like, nah. And part of and one of the, the funniest things about that, of him saying that we'll be partners was about half the excuses as to why he said these these great ideas that he has don't work in his business. He can't execute them because he's got a partner. So just funny how that works out. But um, yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Like, cause as, as a business owner, you, you, you fight the battles, you win some, you lose some, you learn as you go. Um, it's not all, you know, it's not all rainbows and sunflowers and, you know, glitter when you, when you run a small business, it's a lot of hours. It's difficult. It's hard. Um, you don't win all the time. People dislike you. You got to make tough decisions. You've got people trying to take your head off. Um, nothing goes as planned. Things take 10 times longer and cost 10 times the amount of money you think they're going to. Um, and then it's just very confusing to have people that are in a similar situation, um, take shots at you. It's just very unusual whenever they're not solving their own problems. So, um, like I said, just be very careful who you're getting advice from. So as this guy is giving me this free advice, checking my time here. So as this guy is being, uh, giving me this advice, remember I'm running it through the filter. Is this guy where I see myself or is this guy where I want to be? Um, so I'm very careful where I get my advice from. So pay close attention to who you're listening to and be very wary of online gurus, all these people selling programs, all these people selling you the answer, all these people selling you solutions. Like just be very careful because, you know, it, they're, they're selling a product. So just be very careful who you're listening to, be very careful who you're paying attention to and be even more careful who you hand your money over to especially if you're just trying to learn something because uh, most information out there is free or very inexpensive. So you shouldn't have to sign up for a bunch of programs and things like that um, to, to learn what you need to learn. Um, Cause number one, the, the, the free advice I can give you that's, you know, worth what you paid for it. And we'll, we'll, you'll learn more from this one piece of advice and probably anything else. And that's to just get started, just get started, just get going. Um, for instance, if you ever wanted to run a marathon, let's say you're out of shape like me, if you're just horribly out of shape at a, and you want to learn, learn a, you, if you wanted to run a marathon, if I wanted to run a marathon, I would not go on YouTube. I would not go on Instagram. I would not start looking up how to run a marathon. I would put on my running shoes and I'd get my ass outside and I'd start running. That's what I would do. Um, so let's see, we got, uh, be careful who you got your, who, be careful where you get your advice from. Watch out for dream killers. Um, good intentions, like I said, good intentions are, are only worth so much. Some people care about your outcome. Some people don't. So run, run advice through, through the filter. Does this person actually care about where I'm going? Does this person actually care about my outcome? Um, it's a very important question to ask. And then another thing is, um, like I said about getting started, uh, my last little note here is get started, start now, start today. Um, like I said, if you analyze this thing to death, um, in two years, three years, five years, 10 years, you're going to wish you would start it today. So get started now. Um, something I heard a long time ago is uh, keeping your options endlessly open is like its own kind of prison. So being stuck in this situation where you're constantly analyzing, looking, wondering, uh, should I go this way? Should I go this way? Should I go this way? I see all these options. There's so many options. If you keep your options endlessly open, you're pretty much going to put yourself in an options prison. So Pick an option, get started, see how it works, see if you like it. If you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. Anything that you lose along the way, time, money, resources, effort, energy, whatever the case is, 
chalk it up to the cost of education because I promise you everybody pays for their education, whether they go to college, whether they go to trade school, whether they start a business, whether they start their career off as an investor, everybody pays for their education. You're going to pay for yours. I paid for mine. It's just how it works. Anyway, I'm good for tonight. I hope y'all are good for tonight. I really appreciate y'all. I love you guys. Take care of each other and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.